Hello, am I audible, student? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I come bearing good news for your people. आज आप लोगों की फिजिक्स की क्लास होने वाली थी ना आफ्टर दिस यस मैम सो दैट हैज बीन कैंसिल दिस इज द लास्ट क्लास ओके सिंस एक दिन में काफी बर्डन हो जाता सो इट हैज बीन कैंसिल नाउ नाउ वी गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद एनिमल किंगडम नाउ दिस इज वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर्स इन क्लास 11 नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड classification right now we know that classification is done so as to group organisms so that we can study them better and there is always certain characters that we take into consideration while classifying organisms now the basis of classification for animals first of all arrangement of cells how the cells are arranged in the body the symmetry of the body the nature of cello the patterns of digestive circulatory and reproductive systems all of these characters or you can say the terminology is are taken into consideration while classifying the animals so with this we have the following phylums of the animal kingdom phylum porifera phylum cilentrata or phylum cnidaria then there is phylum tenophora phylum platyhelminthes askelminthes annelida Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata, and Chordata. Now, this is with reference to the sequence. As in he, it has been given. The first phylum that we are going to talk about is the phylum Porifera. But before that, we will talk about the various level of organization. Now, we know that cell is a unit of life. When many cells come together, they make up the tissue. When many tissues come together, they make up the organ. And when many organs come together, they make up the organ system. So this system or the way the cells and tissues are arranged, we call them as the level of organization. Now the level of organization, the first thing is that all the members of the kingdom animalia, they are multicellular. There are There is like no member in uh, animal kingdom that is unicellular. Now, the level of organization, what are they? So, first level of organization is the cellular level of organization. In this case, only the cells are present. So, loose cell aggregates are present. This is present in the porifera, which consists of all the sponges. Then comes the tissue level of organization. It happens in the case of cnidaria or cylindrata. Here, a group of cells make the tissue and there is a division of labor because, you know, tissue can be differentiated to perform different functions. Then there is the organ level of organization. Now, organ level of organization is present in the platyhelminthes, which consists of the flat worms. After that, the organ system level of organization. Now, this organ system, meaning when a group of, like when several organs come together, they make up the organ system. So, this is found right from the ascalmentis meaning the round worms up till the cortex now here each of them have their own function to perform now in terms of the digestive system see the digestive system can be of two type incomplete complete now incomplete digestive system is the one where one opening is acting like the mouth as well as the anus this is present in the platyhelminthes. But when there are two separate openings, one is the mouth, one is the anus, then that type of digestive system is known as complete digestive system. Moving forward, talking about the circulatory system. So the circulatory system is again of two types, open and closed. Now, open circulatory system is when the blood is pumped by the heart and all the cells, tissues, organs, they are bathed in it. Meaning there are no like vessels present. So that type of circulatory system will be called as the open circulatory system. It is found in arthropods, tunicates, hemichordates, non-cephalopod mollusks. So all of these would have the open type of circulatory system. Now, talking about the closed type, in this, the organs are not bathed in the blood. Rather, they are 
like there are proper vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries present so that they can conduct the blood to different parts of the body. And this takes place in the case of annelids, uh, uh, chordates, cephalopod mollusks. Clear? Circulatory uh, system and its type clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, all right. Now, moving forward, talking about the body symmetry. Just like how when we were talking about the, um, this thing, the plants, right? In morphology chapter, we saw that there were multiple types of body symmetry, right? Actinomorphic, zygomorphic, wherein we saw like radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Same thing happens here also. Asymmetry. First of all, when there is no symmetry present, meaning the body cannot divide it be into two halves from any plane. So that type of symmetry is asymmetry. And it is found in sponges. Now sponges are the most primitive organ. Now moving forward, there is the radial symmetry. Again, when the body, when any plane passing through the central axis of the body divides the organism into two identical halves. This takes place in cylindrata, pinophora, echinodermata. Then the most advanced one is the bilateral symmetry. Now in this type, what happens? One plane can divide the body into left and the right identical halves. This takes place in annelids, arthropods and so on. Now types of animals depending upon the development of embryonic layer. See, embryonic layer, these layers are responsible for the development of organs. So, in those organisms in which only two layers are present, meaning the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm, only two layers, so those organisms will be known as diploblastic. Now, in between these two layers, an undifferentiated layer is present and that is known as mesoglia. It will be find, like found in the telentrates or the cnidarians. Talking about the triploblastic, the name only suggests try. So, three embryonic layers are present. The outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, inner endoderm. Now, this is present from platyhelminthes up till the chordates. Now, the different types of animals on the basis of body cavity. Now, what is body cavity? Body cavity is the place wherein the whole entire organs and everything are present. And body cavity, it is lined by mesoderm. And we call that as the coelo. Now, the animals that have this body cavity lined by coelo, they are known as coelomates. From annelida to chordata, all of them are coelomates. But the body cavity, which is not lined by the mesoderm, but the mesoderm is present in pouches. Then that is pseudo coelomate, false coelom is there. This happens in the case of Ascalmenthes. But when the body cavity is absent at all, meaning there is nothing present as such, so a coelomate, just like asymmetry. So a coelomate, and this is found in Platyhelminthes. So this is with terms of the different kinds of coelom, whether it is present or absent. Moving forward, talking about the segmentation. Now, see, segmentation is when the body is actually um, certain lines are present in the body that will divide the body into segments, externally also and internally also. And this phenomenon of possessing the segmentation in the body is known as metameric segmentation or metamerism. And one unit of this metamerism is the metamere. And this is mostly found in the earthworms. You will also find this in the uh, caterpillar, butterfly, even on the body of bees. These are segments in their body. Now, later on comes the question, what is notochord? Now, see, in that previous chapter, biological classification, we did discuss about like what are these things present. Now, the notochord, it is a rod-like structure. Okay, it is a rod-like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals. So, it is, notochord is present in the embryonic development, not in the later life. And this notochord is derived or formed from the mesoderm, the middle layer. 
Now, all those are animals that do have the notochord in their embryonic development, they are known as the chordates. And the ones that do not, they are known as the non-chordates. So, starting from phylum porifera up till the phylum echinodermata, all of them are non-chordates. Only the phylum chordata is the one that has notochord present in it. Now, see this chart. This is the uh, different, uh, you can say this thing, the phylums, depending upon the level of organization in them and also the silo. Okay, so animalia, all of them are multicellular. Now, cellular level of organization only find it, you'll find, uh, find this in porifera. Then, when it is tissue, organ or organ system, it can be divided into radial and bilateral. The radial symmetry is found, found in Cylindrata and Tenophora. The bilateral symmetry is found starting from the platyhelminthes up till the chordata. Under the bilateral symmetry, there is the ones acylomate, platyhelminthes, pseudocylomate, ascylminthes, and the true coelomates, the real coelomates are starting from annelids to the chordata. All right, now. Moving forward, we'll discuss about. Yes? Is anyone saying something? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, moving forward, let us talk about the first phylum, that is the phylum Porifera. Now, see, just like how in the kingdom of, sorry, in the kingdom Monera, the sole members were bacteria. So, the that kingdom is for bacteria only. Now, talking about this phylum, the main members are sponges. Okay, they are sponges. They are asymmetrical. They, their body do not have any symmetry. Habitat. Where they live, they, they are generally marine, meaning they live in the ocean. And few of them are freshwater organisms, such as the example spongilla. They have cellular level of organization. Now, where water transport or the canal system is present in their body so that they can actually transport the various things through the help of the water transport channel. Now, this water transport contains the ostia, spongocele, and the osculum. Now, talking about ostia, it is a minute pore through which the water would enter. Then, after entering the ostia, the water will go into the spongocele, which is the central cavity that are lined by cells that are known as polar cells or coanocytes. And then the water will be expelled out of the body of the sponges with the help of osculum. So these three structures are there in the water canal system. Now, why is this water canal system present in the body of the sponges? So for these variety of the reasons, we have for food, ga food gathering, then there is respiratory exchange, removal of wastes. These are the various reasons. Now, talking about the digestions in the case of uh, porifera, so, it is intracellular. Intra means within. So, when the digestion happens within the cell, then that type of digestion is known as intracellular digestion. Meaning, the food is taken directly into the cell and it is digested within the cell. So, when the food is being digested within the cell, that type of digestion is intracellular digestion. Now, body is supported by a skeleton made up of spicules or spongin fibers. Just like how our skeleton has bones in it, which are made up of calcium, but their skeleton has spicules in it, which are made up of spongin fibers. The sexes are not separate. Just like how humans, like male and female, two separate sexes are there. In the case of sponges, it's not the case. They are all hermaphrodites, meaning... Both the male and the female are present in one sort of like a bisexual condition. So the eggs and the sperm, both of them will be produced by the same individual. Now, the reproduction. Reproduction, when it happens asexually, it happens by fragmentation. And when it happens by sexually, so obviously gametes will be involved. Once the gametes fused, they will fertilize actually the whole process of fertilization takes place inside the body of sponges not outside not in the water so it is internal fertilization 
Now development is indirect. Indirect development means um, during getting to the adult stage from the egg stage, there will be a certain periods like a larval stage will come. Okay. So the presence of larval stage between the egg and the adult is the indirect type of development. When this larval stage is absent, we'll call it direct development. So a larval stage is present and that larva is known as sidipid larva. Now the examples of porifera, cycon, spongilla, euspongia. And all of their like uh, common names are also very important to remember, such as freshwater sponges, spongilla. Euspongia is bath sponge. So phylum porifera is clear. Any doubts in phylum porifera? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, moving forward, let's move on to the next phylum, that is phylum coelentrata or cnidaria. Now, in this case, the organisms are radially symmetrical. Their habitat, aquatic, mostly marine, but some freshwater forms are also there, such as the hydra. Now, coelentrates can either be sessile, Sessile means they are stagnant, they cannot move or they can be free swimming, meaning they can freely swim in the water. Now the name Nidaria is derived from the nidoblast or the nidocytes present on the tentacles and the body. See, nidocytes, these are the specialized cells that are present on their tentacles and their body. Now what they do is that they help in the stinging process. They are sort of like a defense mechanism of their body. Now, moving forward, these nidocytes or nidoblasts, uh, these are present in the epidermis. Now, they contain the stinging capsule or nematocytes. Now, what is the reason uh, why these nidoblasts or nidocytes like, exist? So, first of all, it provides the anchorage, the defense, and also it helps to capture the prey. Now, moving forward, the Nidarians, they have tissue level of organization. Tissue level. They are diploblastic, meaning two layers are there. They have a gastrovascular cavity with a single opening that is known as hypostome. Digestion is extracellular, outside the cell and within the cell, both. Some Nidarians have a skeleton that is made up of calcium carbonate. The corals that are found in the ocean. Those are nidarians only and their skeleton are found made up of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Now, uh, in their whole entire life, the nidarians can actually exist in the two forms. Like their life forms have two ways. One is a polyp form, one is the medusa form. Now, polyp, they are sessile and cylindrical. Sessile means they do not move and they are cylinder-like in structure. Example is Hydra and Adamsia. Then in the case of Medusa. Now Medusa, they are the free swimming ones and umbrella shape, the jellyfishes. Right? Everyone has seen jellyfishes? The Aurelia, the scientific name of jellyfish is Aurelia. So it is Medusa type. Now there are some that can exist in both of these forms in Polyp and Medusa. Okay. Now, this phenomena where they can exist in both of these forms, like first they will exist in polyp, they can also change to medusa. This is known as alternation of generation. Just like how it was there in the plant, plant case also, haplo, uh, gametophytes, sporophytes. Now, alternation of generation with respect to animals is known as metagenesis. In this, what happens? The polyp, like the polyp body form, changes into medula, medusa asexually and the medusa changes into polyp sexually. The example of the organism which can exhibit this alternation of generation is obelia. Now talking about the members of the coelentrata, so there is physalia that is commonly known as Portuguese man of war. Then there is adamsia that is known as sea anemone, penatula which is known as sea pen, Gorgonia, which is known as sea fan, and meandrina, that is known as brain coral. 
So these are all the characters and the members of Steel and Traitor or Knight. Now talking about the next phylum, that is phylum Tenophora. Now all the members of this particular phylum, they are commonly known as sea walnuts or foam jellies. They are exclusively marine, meaning no freshwater forms are there. They are marine. They are radially symmetrical, diploblastic, and they have tissue level of organization. Now, they have one characteristic feature, which is the presence of eight external rows of ciliated foam plates. For example, if this is their body, so they have eight rows of ciliated foam plates. And these foam plates, they help in the locomotion process. So it is a characteristic feature. Now, digestion in the case of tenophora is also extracellular and intracellular both. Again, a very unique property about them is the presence of bioluminescence. It is a property that is known as bioluminescence, which is the organism can emit light. like It can shine on its own and it is present in the tenophores. Again, the sexes are not separate, meaning they are hermaphrodite. Reproduction is only sexual. No asexual reproduction is found in them. Fertilization is external, outside the body, and indirect development, meaning some larval stages there. There is a special sense organ which is known as statosis. It is present at the opposite end from the mouth, meaning the aboral end. If the mouth is here, it is present at the opposite side. And it is known as statosis. It is a special sense organ. The members of phylum tenophora are pure pleurobrachia, tenoplana, cestum, and biro. These are the following members of the phylum tenophora. Any doubts up until now? No, ma'am. Up, uh, up until phylum tenophora, everything is clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Jabi da toga puslena. Now, coming on to the fourth phylum, that is phylum platy helminthes. Now, platy helminthes, they are commonly known as flat worms. Their bodies are like flattened, dorso ventricularly. Dorso ventricularly means dorsal position is the behind portion. Ventricle, oh, sorry, ventral position is the top portion. So dono taraf se it has been flattened. So they are known as flat worms. Now, majority of them are endoparasites. Endo means inside. So, they are parasitic inside the body of animals and even they are present in human beings. Now, the symmetry is bilateral. Now, they have bilateral symmetry and they are triploblastic, but they are acelomate. Celom is absent. The level of organization is organ level of organization. Now, the members of platy helminthes which are parasitic. Now, since they are parasitic, they have to contain special structures in their body so that they can, you know, procure their nutrition. So they have hooks and suckers. Hooks and suckers are there. Hooks are present so that they can attach to the body of the host. Suckers are present so that they can suck the blood or the nutrition. Now, they absorb the nutrition from the host's body directly through their body surface. Osmoregulation and excretion takes place through flame cells. These are the specialized cells that help them in osmoregulation and excretion. Now, excretion is the removal of waste. Osmoregulation is the fluid and electrolyte balance. So, that regulation is also done with the help of flame cells. The sexes, they are not separate yet again. They are hermaphrodites. The fertilization is internal fertilization. The development is indirect, meaning it takes place like there is a larval stage present in them. Talking about the members of platy helminthes, so tenia, which is known as tapeworm, fasciola, like fasciola hepatica, the common name is liver fluke. Then there is planaria. Now, planaria, it has a very unique property of like regeneration. Like if we cut planaria into 10 parts, all those 10 parts will grow into the new planaria organism, like different organisms. So this is regeneration capacity. So that is your phylum platyhelminthes. Moving forward, there is the phylum ascalminthes.
Now these are the round worms. Now their body is not flattened. These are the round worms. Now the body is circular. Anything that is round, when you will cut it, you will find it round or circular in cross section. Now they are free living, aquatic, terrestrial or parasitic in plants and animals. They can be free living. Free living means they are not parasitic. Aquatic means they live in water. Terrestrial means they can live on land, live on land. Or they can be parasitic, meaning they can be present inside the like or other organisms such as the plants or animals. Moving forward, uh, they have organ system level of organization in their body. The coelom, they are pseudocilomate. Mesoglia is present in between the ectoderm and the endoderm. So on the basis of embryonic layer, they are triploblastic. Digestive system is complete, meaning they have two separate openings for mouth and anus. And there is a well-developed muscular pharynx is present in them. The excretory products are removed from the body through an excretory pore. It passes via the excretory tube. So the, uh, the role of anus is played by this excretory pore. So you can see that they have a different pharynx and a different opening for the excretion process. So that is why their digestive system is complete. Now the sexes are separate, meaning males and females are present in different bodies and you can actually distinguish in between them, like which is male and which is female. This property is known as sexual dimorphism. Just like how you can differentiate a human male and human female, same way you can differentiate a female round worm and a male round worm. How? The females, they are longer than the males. The fertilization in them is internal fertilization. Development can be direct without larva or it can be indirect with larva. The specialized cells that are known as brunet cells, they are present for the process of excretion. Brunet cells. Talking about the members of Ascalmensis, there is Ascaris, which is known as roundworm, which causes the disease Ascariasis. Then there is Buscheraria, which is the filarial worm. It causes the disease Filariasis. Then there is Encyclosoma, that is hookworm. So this is all about the Ascalmensis. Now moving on to the next phylum, we have phylum Annelida. Now, the annelida has been derived from the word annulus, which means little rings. Their body, if you look at earthworm, the whole body is sort of divided like this. It has segmentation, metameric segmentation. So, this ring-like structure they are referring to, and they have given the name of the phylum in such a way. So, phylum annelida. Now, the habitat is aquatic, which is marine and freshwater both. Or it can be terrestrial. When they are terrestrial, so they are free living, meaning not parasitic. Or they can also be parasitic in nature. So their habitats vary a lot. Now the level of organization in them is the organ system level. The body symmetry is bilateral symmetry. And on the basis of germ layer, they are triploblastic. Means three layers are there. They are true, like they have a true coelom present because of which they are coelomate organisms. The segmentation is metameric segmentation. Metameres are present and because of that only this phylum is annelida. Longitudinal and circular muscles are present. These are like specialized muscles that are present in their body for locomotion process. The example of aquatic annelid is nail. This, this is the organism that is found in the aquatic habitat. Now, since it is an aquatic, so it would require certain um, appendages for swimming. So it has parapodia. So, like, you know, imagine it like oars of the organism and it helps in the swimming process. Now, we know that the circulatory system can be of open and closed type. So, in the case of annelid, the closed type of circulatory system is present, closed, meaning the proper vessels are there. Now, nephridia. Nephridia are the structures that are present for osmoregulation and excretion. 
moving forward, they have a nervous system as well. And their nervous system consists of a pair ganglia, which are connected by the lateral nerves to the dorsal ventral nerve cord. So they have ganglia, which is sort of like the nerve cells of their body. Now talking about nares, it is an aquatic form and it is dioecious. Earthworm and leeches are monoecious. Reproduction is sexual. Now in their case, reproduction is not asexual. The sexual reproduction is found in them. Is it clear? Now, uh, what is the meaning of dioecious and monoecious? See, dioecious means that both the male and female are present in one. Monoecious means that each of them are present separately. Now, looking at the members of the phylum Annelida, so we have Neris, Peritema, which is the scientific name of the earthworm. Then there is Hirudinaria, that is the blood-sucking leech, and it is a freshwater organism. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Any doubts up until now? No, ma'am. So, if the basic, jo inka basis of organ, like, uh, what do you say, classification, if you understand nicely, like what kind of digestive system, fit to fit, everything is like very easy in this particular chapter. Now, talking about the phylum Arthropoda. Now, this is the best phylum. Why? Because majority, I mean, it is the, like, the largest phylum of the animal kingdom is arthropoda. All the insects are a part of this uh, phylum. Arthros means jointed. Poda means the leg, the appendages. So arthropoda in which the legs are jointed. Over two-thirds of all the named species on the earth are arthropods. So imagine. Now, the level of organization is organ system level. Body symmetry is bilateral symmetry. Segmentation is present 100%. On the basis of germ layer, they are triploblastic. Three layers are present. On the basis of body cavity, they are coelomate, meaning true coelom is present. Now, the body of arthropod is covered by an exoskeleton. And this exoskeleton is made up of chitin, which is very hard and durable. So, the... Um, the arthropods, they have chitinous exoskeleton. Now, the body of arthropod, it consists of the head, thorax, and the abdomen. Like, its body is divisible into three parts. Now, they have jointed appendages. Jointed means if you have seen a cockroach or if you have seen a grasshopper, you would see that their legs are like this. This jointed appendages makes them you know, like a very characteristic feature of the phylum Arthropoda. Now, talking about the respiratory organs, now see, since they are now more evolved as compared to the previous ones, so they have special respiratory organs present, such as the gills, the book gills, the book lungs, and a proper tracheal system may also be present in their body. Talking about the circulatory system, so it is open type of circulatory system. Then the sensory organs, these are present in them such as the eyes, they have eyes which are compound eyes. Then they have antenna and they have statocyst that is there for balancing purpose. The excretion takes place with the help of Malpighian tubules. The sexes are separate, male and female can be distinguished. Fertilization is what it is internal and they are oviparous. Oviparous means egg laying organisms. Their development may be direct or indirect. Most of the members of they are but this phylum, since it is one of the largest phylum, and it is very economically important. Why? Because we get certain products from them or we get harmed by them, such as the apis, that is honeybee. We get the honey from them. The Indian variety of apis is apis indica. 
then the silkworm that is known as bombyx we get the silk from the bombyx then the lac insect that is lacis the bangles that are made up of lac lac kichudia that comes from this only then some of the members of phylum arthropoda they also act as vectors vectors are the ones that carry the like the parasites or the organism for diseases such as the anopheles culex aedes all of them are mosquitoes anopheles culex aedes these are the mosquito species and mosquitoes they are the vectors of diseases anopheles is a vector of malaria culex is a vector of filariasis and aedes is a vector of dengue moving forward gregarious pests some of the arthropods are also gregarious pests such as locusta that is grasshopper what does it do it destroys the vegetation then there is king crab king crab the scientific name of king crab is limulus it is a living fossil meaning right from the beginning of its origin and up till now it has not changed one bit so it is known as living fossil then prawns butterfly scorpion and the silver fish which is known as lepisma even though it is known as a fish but it is an insect many a times they give this fish in the fishes question like silver fish and students get confused so uh, many examples like multiple examples are present in this particular phylum so pay attention pay very close attention to it and this is your phylum arthropoda and it is the largest phylum now the second largest phylum is mollusca now mollusca contains all the soft bodied organisms their habitat can be terrestrial or aquatic and aquatic there will be marine and fresh water they have organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and a true coelom is present now their body is covered with a shell that is made up of calcium so calcareous shell now the body of the uh, mollusca they have been divided into three parts yet again but here the parts are the head the muscular foot and the visceral hump now a soft spongy layer is present which is like which is made up of skin and it forms a mantle over the visceral hump sort of like a covering over the visceral hump now the space between the hump and the mantle is known as the mantle cavity see this is the hump and this hump is actually covered by a very soft and spongy layer of skin that is mantle and the region between the hump and the mantle is known as the mantle cavity now feather like gills are present the gills are feather like and uh, the gills they are responsible for the respiratory and the excretory functions both of it tentacles are also present on the top of the head such as the anterior portion and tentacles they are sensory in nature they help to scent the environment now the mouth contains a file like rasping organ which is known as radula this radula is present it is responsible for the feeding process rasping process now mollusks are also dioecious sexes are separate they are oviparous with indirect development oviparous means what is the meaning of oviparous egg laying organism correct they are egg laying and their development is again indirect what is the meaning of indirect development hmm? tell me girls what is the meaning of indirect development the indirect development means during their developmental stage starting from the egg up till the adult there will be a larval stage present and that type of development is indirect development but when the larval stage will not be present then we'll call it as direct development 
talking about the members of the phylum mollusca. So we have multiple members here also. We have apple snail, which is known as pila. It is asymmetrical. It is the only organism that is asymmetrical. Rest, all of them are bilaterally symmetrical. Why it is asymmetrical? Because its body is sort of, it has a torsion. Okay, so that is why it is asymmetrical. Then there is the pearl oyster, which is known as pink tada. There is cuttlefish, which is known as sepia. There is squid, which is known as loligo. Devilfish, that is octopus. Sea hare, that is apnesia. Tusk shell dentalium. And chiton, that is known as chetopleura. These are the members of the phylum mollusca. Moving forward, there is phylum echinodermata. Now see. They are unique because they have the endoskeleton of calcium. Okay, so their endoskeleton is calcareous. And their, like, their name is Echinodermata because they are spiny body, like the body contains spine, tiny spine like structures. They are triploblastic and coelomate. Organ level, sorry, organ system level of organization is present in them. Now, one thing is a very unique property is that the adults of Echinoderm, they are radially symmetrical and the larva is bilaterally symmetrical. Now, see, tell me one thing. Out of radial symmetrical and bilaterally symmetrical, which one is more advanced and which one is primitive? Uh, Ma'am, can you repeat, please? Yes. My question is, out of radially symmetrical and bilaterally symmetrical, which one is more advanced and which one is primitive? Uh, bilateral mm -hmm. symmetry is advanced and very good. Radial symmetry. Very good, exactly. The bilateral symmetrical is the it is the advanced feature. Now, here do you see a very weird trend that the adults they are radially symmetrical, meaning they have a primitive character, but the larva they have bilaterally symmetry. Okay, so here we are seeing in the larva, there is bilateral, the advanced character is there, but in the adult one, there is a primitive character. So this phenomena is known as retrogressive metamorphosis, meaning in the adult that should have had the most advanced features, they have a backward feature. So this, this phenomenon is known as retrogressive metamorphosis. Now, digestive system is complete, meaning they have two separate openings which in which one serves as the mouth, the other serves as the anus. Now, in them, the water vascular system is present. Now, the water vascular system is responsible for locomotion, capturing of food, the transportation of food, the respiration. All of these things are actually carried on with the help of the water vascular system. Now, the reproduction is sexual. The fertilization is external, outside the body. Development is indirect. They have a larval condition present and the larva is free swimming and the larva is bilateral symmetrical. Talking about the examples of phylum echinodermata, so we have the starfish that is known as asterias. Then we have sea urchin that is known as echinus. Sea lily that is known as antidon. Sea cucumber that is known as cucumaria, and then there is the brittle star that is known as ophiuria. And uh, in your book, there may be a uh, like a diagram of starfish and brittle star. So try to you know visually distinguish between them. Like both of them are very different from each other. Even though being a member of phylum Echinodermata, you should know how to distinguish them. Right? Asterias is very different, and ophiuria that is the brittle star. It is a little thinner as compared to the starfish so pay attention to that also moving forward we have the phylum hemichordata now earlier it was a sub phylum under the phylum chordata but now it has been put like a separate phylum in this phylum worm like animals are present 
and all of them are marine. They have organ system level of organization. Now see, organ system level, bilateral symmetry, triploblastic coelomate. This we have discussed in the initial part, only, right? Now, with that, you can make out for the, all of the phylums, isn't it? Isn't it clear, girls? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Now, yes, they are coelomate also. Now, the body is cylindrical. They are worm-like. And their body is divisible into anterior proboscis, collar, and trunk. These are the three parts of their body. Their circulatory system is open type of circulatory system. Respiration happens with the help of gills. And the excretory organ is the proboscis gland. Now, in their collar area, stomochord is present, which is a structure almost similar to a notochord. This is why they are known as hemichordate. Hemi means half. Halfly, they are representing or resembling the chordates. The sexes are separate, meaning the male and female can be distinguished. And the fertilization is external. Happens outside the body. Development is again indirect development. The examples of this particular, you can say, phylum, echinodermata, is balanoglossus and sacoglossus. Moving forward, now coming on to the phylum chordata, to the ones in which we belong. Now, notochord is present, dorsal hollow nerve cord is present, and paired pharyngeal gill slits are present. These are the three characters that are very unique to the phylum chordata. They are triploblastic, bilaterally symmetrical, coelomate with organ system level of organization. They have closed circulatory system and post enal tail is present. Now the chordata phylum can be divided into three subphylums. Phyl subphylum unicata or urochordata, subphylum cephalochordata and the subphylum vertebrata. Now, talking about the cunicata, that is urochordata and cephalochordata, both of them, like both of these subphylums, they are together known as protochordates. Proto, referring to the first. So, the first form of the first appeared chordates are the protochordates. Okay? <coughs> now, in the case of urochordata or cunicata, Notochord is present in the tail of the larva. Okay, and uh, their body is actually covered by a tunic-like structure because of which they are known as tunicata. The examples of urochordata are acedia, salpa, and doliolum. Then there is cephalochordata. Notochord extends from the head to the tail. Here, only in the tail of the larva, and here, from head to tail, the examples of cephalochordate are amphioxus, branchiostoma, lancelet. Now, one thing to remember here is that all the vertebrates, they are chordates. But all the chordates are not vertebrates. See, the thing that distinguishes the vertebrata from the rest of the members of chordata is that the vertebrata in them the notochord gets replaced by a vertebral column, which is absent in cunicata and cephalochordata. So this is the reason why we can say that all the vertebrates are chordates because they have notochord in some point of their life. But all the chordates are not vertebrates because they do not have the vertebral column. Talking about the features of the chordates. Now, the heart is muscular, made up of cardiac muscles, and it is ventral in position, meaning it is towards the chest side, front side. Now, the, there are chambers in the heart, two chambers, three chambers, and four chambers. Kidneys are present for excretion and osmoregulation. They have paired appendages. Either they have paired fins or they have paired limbs. The subphylum vertebrata, it has two divisions. We have anatha and nathostomata. Now, anatha are those organisms that do not have the jaw. They are jawless. 
Nathos stomata are the ones that have the jaws. Now, under the anatha, meaning the organisms that lack the jaw, we have the cyclostomata, the class, the kingdom phylum class. So, the class cy cyclostomata is there. Under the ones that have the jaw, we have physis, which bears all the fishes. And then we have tetrapoda. Tetra means four, poda means limbs. So, four limbs. So, that, under that comes amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammals. Under the Pisces, they will bear all the fins. And under them comes the chondric thighs and ostic thighs. Now, talking about the class Cyclostomata, it comes under what? It comes under the Anatha. Anatha division of the subphylum vertebrata. Now, all the members of this particular class Cyclostomata, they are ectoparasites on fishes. Like they are present on the body of the fishes and they are parasites. The body of cyclostomata, they are elongated and it contains 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits. Important. The number of pairs is important. Now cyclostomes, they are jawless organisms with sucking or circular mouths. Their mouths are circular in shape. Their bodies do not have any scales present and they do not have paired fins present. The cranium, the skull and the vertebral column in the case of cyclostomes, they are made up of cartilage. Cartilage is cranium and vertebral column. Is there. Circulation will 100% be closed type. They are marine, but they migrate to fresh water for spawning. See, they, they primarily live in marine habitat only, but they go to fresh water for laying their eggs. This process is known as spawning. Now, after the spawning is done, the adults, they die in a few days. Then the larva would undergo metamorphosis and become an adult, and then they would again go back to the ocean. And when they will re reach their reproductive age, they will again go to the fresh water for spawning. After laying eggs, they will die. And the cycle repeats. Now, examples of the cyclostomata are petromyzin, which is commonly known as lamprey, and migzine, that is known as hagfish. Anatha and cyclostomata, both of these things are clear? Yes. Any doubts? All right. Moving forward, talking about this thing, uh, the Nathos tomata, the ones that have the jaws present in them. Now, they have been divided into further classes such as chondric thighs and ostic thighs. Now, the class chondric thighs, see, they have cartilaginous endoskeleton because now, the cartilage is made up of chondrin. So, that is why chondric thighs. They have a cartilaginous endoskeleton. They are cartilaginous fishes. Now, they are marine with streamlined body. The mouth is located on a ventral position. The mouth is ventral. Notochord is persistent throughout their life. The gill slits are separate. The operculum, which is the gill cover, is absent in the case of chondric thighs. The skin is tough and covered with minute scales that are known as placoid scales. Now, the teeth are modified placoid scales. When the placoid scales are modified, the teeth are there. They are directed backwards. Their jaws are very powerful and they are predaceous. Okay, they are predators. Air bladder is absent in them. And since air bladder is not present in their body, because of this, they have to constantly keep on swimming so that they don't sink in the water. This is the reason why the sharks, they are always swimming. Why they are swimming? Because they do not have the air bladder. And sharks are the member of chondric thighs. Now, their hearts are two-chambered in which they have one auricle or atrium and one ventricle. Some of the members, they contain electric organs such as torpedo, which is known as the electric ray. 
some of them have poison sting which is known as stingray and the scientific name of stingray is trigon now they are poikilothermous poikilothermous means that they are cold blooded they cannot regulate their body temperature sexes are separate in them and the males how can you distinguish the males from the females is because the male members of this particular class they have pelvic fins like claspers present in the pelvic fins the fertilization is internal and they are viviparous meaning they give birth to the young one the examples are dogfish scolidon sawfish pristis great white shark carcharodon stingray and electric ray so these like all the sharks come under the chondric thighs the main reason of separating the pieces into two or the nathostomata actually the nathostomata into two is because of the presence of like what kind of endoskeleton is there now we have discussed about the cartilaginous endoskeleton now the bony endoskeleton ostic thighs they have a bony endoskeleton they are both marine and freshwater now their mouth is located terminally they have four pairs of gills and they are covered by the operculum on each side now the skin have cycloid or tenoid scales okay air bladder is present so they can rest they do not have to swim, swim constantly and since the air bladder is present so it would regulate the buoyancy won't help them like won't allow them to sink again their hearts are also two chambered and they are also cold blooded and the sexes are separate the fertilization is usually external and they lay eggs they are oviparous but the development is direct the examples of this particular thing meaning the marine examples of ostic thighs the flying fish that is known as exocetus the sea horses that is known as hippocampus the fresh water ones are fighting fish known as betta catla which is known as catla rohu that is labio rohita this is the one that we eat and magu that is known as clarius and the angel fish the most beautiful one it is known as pterophyllum and also the clarius and the pterophyllum both of them are put into aquariums have you seen in aquarium those black long really ugly looking fishes the big ones have you noticed those fishes in any aquarium those are like uh, the mouth sort of like have tentacles like this and their bodies are like very long like this have you noticed these kind of fishes hmm yeah those are clarias the magu they are like responsible for eating the algae and everything they clean the tank that is why they are kept in the aquarium so these two fishes are the aquarium fishes now coming on to the tetrapoda tetra means four poda means legs or appendages so when four legs are present that is tetrapoda so we have various classes amphibia reptilia aves and mammals now class amphibia amphibia they live in water as well as the land they have two pairs of limbs and their body is divisible into head and trunk tails are present in some members now their skin is very moist scales are not present and their eyelids are present they have three chambered heart they have three chambered hearts in which two chambers are for auricle and one is the ventricle now they have a tympanum present which is a like the eardrum they do not have the external ear but they have the tympanum present because of which they can hear now the elementary canal the urinary tract and the reproductive tract all of them have one common opening which is known as cloaca this is only for amphibian their respiration happens with the help of gills lungs and skin they are also cold blooded so they are poikilothermous meaning they cannot regulate their body temperatures the sexes are separate 
and fertilization is external meaning it happens outside the body they are oviparous they lay eggs their development is indirect and the larva of a frog is known as a tadpole everyone knows this it looks more like a fish now examples of the amphibia we have toad a toad that is known as bufo frog is known as rana rana tigrina then there is tree frog which is known as hyla then there is salamander which is known as salamandra and then there is the limbless amphibian it does not have limbs and that is known as ichthyophis so these are the various examples of amphibia students do you have any doubts up till now no ma'am 100% sure yes all right. very good now moving on we have the class reptilia reptilia or this class particularly contains of all the organisms that have a creeping and crawling motion that is why they are known as reptile they are terrestrial their body is covered by dry and hornified skin or they also have scales present on their body or scutes present they also do not have any external opening of the ear but tympanum which is the eardrum that is the ear for these organisms whenever limbs are present so two pairs of limbs are there now all of the members of reptiles they are three chambered hearts but only crocodiles they have four chambered hearts present they are poikilothermous meaning they are cold blooded snakes and lizards shed their scales as skin casts the sexes are separate the fertilization is internal happens inside the body they are oviparous meaning they lay eggs and their development is direct talking about the examples so we have the turtle that is chelon we have the tortoise that is testudo then the tree lizard is chameleon the garden lizard is callus crocodile is crocodilus then there is alligator and then the wall lizard, uh, lizard that is hemidactyle then also variety of snakes are also found in this particular reptile uh, sorry class reptilia such as the cobra that is known as naja the crate that is known as bangaris and then the viper snake that is known as vipera so all of the examples of every single phylum every single class is very important moving on we have the class apes all the birds are the members of this particular class and their characteristic feature is the presence of feathers on their body most of the members like maximum members of the aves they can fly there is a flightless bird such as the ostrich and also the kiwi then the beak is present in their body four limbs are modified into wings they do not have the four limbs but their four limbs they get modified and form the wings the hind limbs the like the lower legs they have scales present which is used for walking swimming and clasping onto the branches and everything their skin is very dry without any oil gland but one kind of oil gland is present at the base of their tail which is known as the preen gland that is why you might have noticed some birds they you know like they put their lowest feather into their mouth and then they wipe it off that is because it produces oil the endoskeleton of the birds is bony endoskeleton meaning it is made up of bones and they have long bones that are hollow like our bones have bone marrow because of which we can never fly but the birds they do not have bone marrow rather they have air cavities present and these type of bones are known as pneumatic bones because of the presence of the air cavity filled hollow bones the they can fly now in their digestive system there is two additional chambers one is known as the crop the other is the gizzard these are like for better digestion the heart is four chambered two auricles and two ventricles are there they are homeothermous meaning now they are warm blooded they can regulate their body temperature the respiration happens with the help of lung now in their body instead of the larynx which is the voice box 
they have syrinx because of which they can produce beautiful sounds. The sexes are separate. You can distinguish in between them. They are oviparous. Again, they give, uh, like they lay eggs and their development is direct. No larval stage. Examples. The crow is known as corvus. The pigeon is columba. The parrot is cetacula. The ostrich is truthio. Peacock is known as pavo. And then the penguin is known as aptenodites. And vulture is neophron. Lastly, there is the class Mammalia, in which we belong. Now, mammals are found in majority of the habitats, such as like even extreme ones, polar ice caps, they are found in desert, mountains, forests, grasslands, and even dark caves. Some of the mammals are flying, so they are flying mammals. Some can be swimming mammals as well. The characteristic feature of the class Mammalia is the presence of mammary gland in the females to nourish the young ones. Now, they have two pairs of limbs, forelimb and hindlimb, which are used to walk, run, climb, burrow, swim and fly. They have hair present on their body. External ear or pinna is present in the mammal, mammals. Different types of teeth are present in the jaw. The heart is four-chambered. The respiration happens with the help of the lungs. The sexes are separate. Male and female are separate organisms. Fertilization is internal, meaning inside the body of the female. And the VV pairs, they are like they give birth to the young ones. Development is direct. <clears throat> but there are some mammals that are oviparous, meaning egg-laying mammals, such as the platypus, that is Scientifically known as Ornithorhynchus. It is an egg-laying mammal. The rest of the oviparous mammals are kangaroo, which is known as macropus, flying fox, which is known as pteropus, camelus is for camel, macaca is for monkey, ratus, rat, canis, dog, pelis, cat, elephus is for elephant, equus is for horse, then delphinus is for the common dolphins. Balanoptera is the blue whale. It is a swimming mammal. Then Panthera tigris is for tiger. Panthera leo is for lion. Is it clear? Now there is also uh, this thing. Panthera pardus that is for leopard. Okay, so all of these are the examples of mammals. And with this we have completed the whole entire animal kingdom. Now tell me if there are any doubts, anything that is troubling you. Any terminology? Have you people understood cold blooded, warm blooded? Yes, ma'am. Have you understood the different levels of organization in the body? Organ, organ system, tissue, and everything? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What about the digestive system? Have you understood the different types? Yes, ma'am. Circulatory system? Yes. All right. So with this, we have completed the animal kingdom. Now, I really hope that you people do not have any doubts. Or do you? Uh, Ma'am, do we also have to learn the scientific names? 100%. You have to because, you know, many a times what happens in the question, they will refer to any organism with their scientific name only. Like, Maybe they are talking to you about any characteristic of mammalia, the class mammalia. And then they'll give you like, for example, a different, for example, they'll give you the scientific name of some other class or some other phylum. So if they'll say cetacula, okay, so say they'll say cetacula have mammary glands present in there. Now you should know what cetacula is to understand whether or not they would have the mammary gland present in them or not. So, 100% all the examples are very, very important. Clear? And in this uh, particular chapter, I think in my notes, I have given a little extra examples. Mm, maybe or maybe not. But uh, the examples that are given in your book, the NCRT book examples, they are 100% important. It means very Okay? You can't skip it. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Also, you know, one more kind of question that can come, examples related. They say they will give certain characters like triploblastic, 
telomate, organ system, blah, blah, blah. They'll give you all these characters. And then in the four options, they will give you the scientific names. And then they'll ask you to pick out KSRA characters, wo kis organism ke. So for that, you should again know the scientific names. You know? So scientific names are very important. So uh, today we have also completed Animal Kingdom. Chalo, abhi to khair, ekdam fresh fresh hai, you feel like doubts nahi hai. Just in case, after reading the chapter, if you do have any doubts, so next class mein you can ask me, okay? Okay, ma'am.